What's poppin' y'all? It's your boy Pew the Plug. We are finally here. The first episode of the Atlanta Hawks Rebuild. This is also the introduction video to the Pee Wee the Gamer channel. For those of y'all that know me, I've done basketball videos and a bunch of miscellaneous stuff over the years that y'all have loved and enjoyed. Now, going forward, we will leave the basketball stuff for the Pee Wee the Plug channel. And the Pee Wee the Gamer channel is all of the other miscellaneous stuff. So we talking behind the scenes of the podcast, shoe collection videos, life advice, 2K rebuild, Madden rebuild, MLB the show. All of that other stuff now has its own place to live. And it's going to be here on Pee Wee the Gamer. I appreciate everybody who jumped out and subscribed before we ever dropped the video. That is much, much, much love. And I appreciate everybody who's been patient for this rebuild. This is going to be one of the ones, y'all. This is going to be one of the ones. I know I've done some epic stuff in the past. A lot of y'all are sick and tired of me stopping in the middle of rebuilds and things like that. I promise y'all we locked in. This is the one. Sit back, relax, grab y'all popcorn. Let's start the show. Yiddig! So as y'all can see off the top, we are the Atlanta Hawks, like I said in the intro. Um, down in the bottom left, everything is on point with real life, right? So today is January 18th, 2024, Thursday, as you can see at the top right. Um, but like I said, bottom left, we're 17 and 23. We are, um, we're decent with the chemistry team. Chemistry 75% really don't matter because like you see by the title of the video, we about to have a large fire sale. Um, I'm feeling just like they feel in real life. I'm not too happy with what this direction of this team is going. Obviously we have some really good players that can have some value on the market. I really do like that about us. Um, and I'm gonna just be honest as we go to this roster and have a very quick overview um, Trey Young, we know what Trey Young is about. The engine of this offense, the guy who has been the uh, catapult and face of the franchise um, since he was drafted, led them to the Eastern Conference Finals, and that's exactly what we're trying to go back to. We want to be one of those top echelon Eastern Conference teams. But I will say this: as talented as Trey Young is, as much success as he's had, this is going to be a very critical time for him and his future with the Atlanta Hawks. Now that I'm running the show. We don't have that much time to sit around and continue to do all of the same things we've done over and over. We're not going to keep firing and hiring new coaches. We're not going to keep trying to find him running mates. The DeJounte Murray experience hasn't really gone well. That's fine. We're going to pivot and try something new. This last thing that we try will probably be the last hoorah. Whatever next phase we enter, if it's not showing the progress or the potential that we are looking for, then I think we'll start to open up the... Uh, the opportunities and the possibilities of moving from Trey Young because he is going to be a player that would have an extreme amount of value on the open market and the things that we could get back for him would set this uh, franchise up to have a miraculous future. So I'm just putting that out there for as far as this season, we're going to keep Trey Young. We're going to keep Trey Young. We're not even going to listen to any offers. We're, we're going to give this one last chance um, just because we have to. He's, he's too good of a player to just come in and automatically trade the entire. We don't want to do that. The city of Atlanta, they love Trey Young. Um, there is a blueprint that we are going to follow. And I think there is a possibility and there's a way that that blueprint can work. So what I want to I want y'all to really envision is 2016 2017. That was the year where the Boston Celtics had a really good year um, with Isaiah Thomas as their best player. That's when they were first in the Eastern Conference and everything. We kind of want to take that blueprint and implement it on this roster. As you see, there are some things that I don't know if it's going to be here long term. I don't know who's going to go, who's going to stick around. We don't know. But I know that blueprint of having a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who is a miniature guard like Trey Young, um, guys who have the ball in their hands a lot who can score. Um, Trey Young is definitely a better passer, but miniature miniature guard, those teams are built around. And I think the one thing that I love about that Boston Celtics team that allowed them to have success with Isaiah Thomas, as small as he was, was they put a lot of size around him and they put a lot of defensive minded players. So you had Avery Bradley right next to him in the backcourt being a pit bull. You had Jay Crowder playing hard nose defense and being physical. And you had Al Horford, high IQ guy, Amir Johnson. You had a young Marcus Smart. You had a rookie Jalen Brown. There was a lot of different pieces on that team that complemented Isaiah Thomas. And that's what we have to find with Trey Young. Um, we have to find pieces that can cover his weaknesses and heighten his uh, strengths. So obviously we want guys around him that can shoot the basketball. 
We would love some guys who can also maybe put the ball on the floor, create some plays here and there, and every once in a while, Trey Young can play off of them. But on the other side of the floor, we need four other people at all times on the floor who are either average or highly above average defenders. But we can no longer have Trey Young and any other below average defenders on the floor with him. That's just not smart. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, DeJounte is going to be on the trade block. No secret there. Um, Clint Capella, I like him. But at 29 with two years left on that deal, I would love, love to try to find somebody that can be a suitor. Um, the only thing about him is that the, the center market is just not deep. It's just not a, a place where a bunch of teams, especially the contending teams, they don't really need centers. So I really don't know how we could even work a trade or who would use them, how they would use them. So that's going to be something I might lean on y'all with. You know what I mean? Like everybody ain't going to get traded in this first episode. I can tell you that. But a guy like Clint Capella, somebody y'all could definitely throw some trades in the comments for. And I'll look through them and lean on y'all um, as part of my front office because he is a guy that I think will be the hardest to move just out of realism. I don't I don't want to just trade him to anybody. I don't want to give him to a team that already has two centers. You know what I'm saying? Like I want him to go to some place that would actually use him um, legitimately. DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter is on a trade block. Nothing against DeAndre Hunter. I just think we need to shake this team up. What I think the Atlanta Hawks envision him being and and you know the idea of him being one of the pieces around trey young it just hasn't manifested still only 26 years old he signed long term i think moving him would be extremely easy this is what the prototypical wing slash forward that everybody is kind of looking for maybe a change of scenery will unlock something for him a congo i really like a congo um especially with the idea of moving on from clint capella i envision him a potentially potentially maybe being an al horford type player you know, high IQ, um, could do some different things defensively. Uh, st still only 23, so we're going to have to develop some of that Al Horfordness. But when I envision that team um, in Boston, there were some guys in that front court that can move around a little bit. Um, Kelly Olenek, Al Horford, giving different looks, picking and popping. I don't know what a Congo's three is. I wouldn't expect it to be that high, but I think there's some potential to be tapped into expanding his range a little bit just to open up the offense a little bit so yeah 88 mid-range shot 68 three-point shot not bad um if we put a little bit of work in there maybe we can get it to the 70 or something like that and then on the defensive side of the basketball interior defense 79 64 perimeter defense not that bad hopefully that can continue to take some strides up as he continues to develop and i know that block should be high 72 block off 84 offensive rebound we got to get the defensive rebound up and where's the help help defense iq 83 i'm big on help defense iq i'm big on players knowing where to be and how to help their teammates and have proper rotations that's going to be something y'all going to hear me talk about a lot is that help defense iq like i prioritize that um over a lot of other stuff i'd rather have high help iq versus somebody that has a high steal like you know what I mean? Like it, knowing where to be is an important factor on a basketball floor, especially on the defensive side of the basketball. Um, Jalen Johnson, he's not going anywhere for, for right now. You know what I mean? Like nobody is untouchable for the right price. Anybody on this team could be had. But a guy like Jalen Johnson will not be going anywhere. And then Sadiq Bey and everybody else, Bogdanovich, you know what I mean? Those are guys that like if we need them to help strengthen a deal to get a deal done, then maybe... Um, I'm not necessarily looking to get rid of Bogdanovich, but again, he's not untouchable. It's just about what is out there. Um, and then the same thing for everybody else. Kobe Bufkin, I'm going to say this before we get into the, the main part of the episode in which I want to see. I'm a high and firm believer in Kobe Bufkin. He is not going to go anywhere. He is going to be the guy in this series that we are going to be delicate with and we are going to really focus on his development. Like, we are going to put a lot of stock and a lot of investing into Kobe Bufkin to be our hidden gem. You know what I mean? I think successful teams always have to have that homegrown talent that they develop and that like does way more than people expect. You know what I'm saying? And he has to be that for us. We have to figure out a way to really strengthen him um, and find him a role next to or behind trey young you know what i'm saying like even if he just is a six man next year if he finds a way with a six five frame to play and coexist on the floor um with trey young he's going to be highlighted so understand and love you know every every fan base all teams they have those guys those hidden guys that the fan base just loves i want y'all to be ready to embrace 
and put your arm around Kobe Bufkin because he's going to be the guy for us in this series. Um, and I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. That's the main overview. Um, when I go to the trading block, y'all already see I got these guys on a trading block right here. These are some of the guys that we're targeting. Alex Caruso, obviously, would be a nice fit. Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, Bojan Bogdanovic would be nice. And then Malcolm Brogdon, Jeremy Grant. Um, guys that y'all could understand why would we why we would want them and why they would fit. And um, as far as untouchables, we don't really have any. I mean, like I said, Trey Young, as far as right now, is kind of untouchable. Same with Jalen Johnson. But at the same time, if somebody called with the right price, please believe that those two guys will get their ass dropped off at the airport. Um, now, as far as trades, right? Just because we started in a, in a situation where it's kind of start today, you know what I mean? So we already kind of got to get the, the ball rolling, which I know y'all have no problem with. To start off the series in the first episode, and we already got trades lined up and things like that. That's exciting. So the trade deadline is February 8th. We basically have one, two, we basically have two, kind of three weeks. If you combine these days um, with these few days that's left over, we have about four weeks, three or three weeks. Um, I'm going to get the party started now, right? And I'm going to throw two trades up and I just want y'all to see the first trade that I had cooked up because I was just curious and I didn't want to be one of those guys who spends the length of his, his first video um just looking over trade so i got one that i put together and it's gonna be a three-teamer so we're gonna have Dejounte, we're gonna have sadiq bay we are also going to have deandre hunter it's a very big one and then we're going to get our second team involved which is going to be the trailblazers where are the trailblazers at and we're going to get Malcolm Brogdon, who I'm a big fan of, Jeremy Grant, and then you go over here and you get the New York Knickerbockers, and they are going to give up Evan Fournier and some picks. Really should be Quentin Grimes. I'm I'm never I'm never sure what picks the Knicks would give up in real life. I gotta think they would give up the Mavericks pick because it's top ten protected. And I have to think that they would give up their pick. I don't know what the Pistons protected pick converts to, but because the Pistons are so bad, you probably want to keep that. And you know, the Knicks know they're going to the playoffs. So we'll just lie to protect their pick. This goes to Atlanta. This goes to New York. This goes to boom. Is it this, this goes to you and then that goes and then oh yeah ish wayne right a throw in goes to the knicks i like this deal at first this is not a deal that we're going to do i don't want y'all i hope hopefully nobody got they they hopes up high i just wanted to show y'all this is something at first that i was thinking i like this trade a lot now the only thing i don't like about this y'all um that may be not all the way by in is i think i don't really want to commit to anything I think right now is not a time in Atlanta where we really want to commit. In a situation where fit is so important next to Trey Young, like everything, the pieces have to be damn near perfect. I just don't think it's smart to commit to Jeremy Grant five year, $160 million. It's not that he's a bad player. It's not that I think that contract is, is super horrible. I think Jeremy Grant is, is, is really good. Um, I think he continues to get better. I think he fits there. The only thing about Jeremy Grant is he's kind of in the same mold as a guy that we now have in Jalen Johnson, who's emerging. So I don't really want to have the same player, especially if I have one that's kind of, well, not kind of, he's a lot cheaper, younger, um, not on Jeremy Grant's level yet, but it ain't that far away to see him continue to progress. Um, and yeah, I just don't, I, I want to keep things open and fluid so that we can make proper decisions going forward and not be committed to something like a five-year deal. Just because we've seen with DeJounte, as good as it can look on paper, we need to be able to be in a position where we can pivot. So after looking through that and feel like and feeling like, you know, we can probably have a better deal out there, we went out and we made a pivot. It is the same type of situation, just some minor things. So now what we do is we take Ish Wayne right out. We go over here, just like real life. We add Quentin Grimes. 
And instead of Jeremy Grant, we get somebody else who I think could fit over here and defend and do whatever, do everything that we need them to do. And so now DeJounte Murray is going to go to the, the New York Knicks. He's going to be joined by his good old buddy, pal, um, Patty Mills. Both guys are former Spurs. Um, we get Brogdon. We get Matisse. And then Quentin Grimes. Boom. And then we also are going to get a second round pick from Portland. That's ours. And boom. So in long story short, DeJounte Murray is going to be a New York Nick. Patty Mills is also going to be a Nick. The Portland Trailblazers get younger. And they get more positional. And that's the that's the other part about Jeremy Grant. The the Portland Trailblazers, they're not giving up Jeremy Grant for nothing. Jeremy Grant, you know, they're going to want some picks. This deal, I don't feel like we got to get a Portland Trailblazers no picks. You're getting off of Malcolm Brogdon, who is, what, 31 years old? Yeah, 31 years old. Matisse Thibel is a 26-year-old with two years on his deal, two years on his deal. And y'all getting back a 7, uh, well, not a 77, but a 26-year-old wing who's a 77 who's already tied up long term you have no you have don't you don't have to worry about paying him you don't have to worry about him leaving this is a huge upgrade in my opinion for the blazers now when you look at the blazers they'll have a lot smoother depth chart and their core and their timeline will be a lot more sharper so now you have anthony simons shade and sharp deandre hunter jeremy grant and DeAndre Aiden, Robert Williams, and you still have School Henderson. You got your, your picks. We not asking for no picks from you, anything like that. No first round picks, I'll say. And it's a huge upgrade. You also get Sadiq Bay too. So, in my opinion, we don't have to give no first round picks. Now, if we were asking for Jeremy Grant, these Nick picks would probably have to get rerouted. We probably have to give them one of those picks. We probably have to think about giving giving up one of our own picks. I like this deal because we get expiring money in Evan Fournier. We get a young Quinn Grimes, who is going to be a 3 and D guy, hopefully can fit next to Trey Young. We get another 3 and D guy, Matisse Thibel. We get a vet, two guard, who's going to fit right perfectly next to Trey Young and can also mentor Kobe Bufkin. And everybody leaves away happy. The Knicks get their guy. The Blazers get younger and their timeline is better fitted. And we get a two more draft picks to go with the already two draft picks that we have and that sets up for, that sets us up for the summer to go out and make a big splash we have our own pick we have the kings pick we're going to get the mavericks pick because that the mavericks going to go to the playoffs and they're not going to have a top 10 pick obviously the knicks pick they're going to go to the play we have four first round picks to look forward to and that sets us up tremendously um and i think this is a deal everybody walks away from happily um so we're going to do this we gonna we gonna do this trade, um, voila! And now there we go. This is the new new look Hawks with Malcolm Brogdon, um, Matisse Thybul, Quinn Grimes. Are we gonna be projected to be as good as we we was with Dejounte and Hunter? No, but I'm fine with having the rest of this year be something where we just kind of wrote just 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 thug it out. Um, if it gets super ugly. I'm fine with shutting down Trey Young, trying to give some minutes to Kobe Bufkin and Jalen Johnson. Maybe even AJ Griffin can get some minutes, um, and just and just kind of going forward with that. Like I said it in earlier, still one more move I think could be made with Clint Capella. I don't know where I want to go with that. I'm gonna show y'all two things that've been on my mind as far as Clint Capella trades. So the first thing is this: you go Clint Capella. And then there's Wiggins. But I'm going to be honest, y'all. I, I Again, same thing with the thing with Jeremy Grant. I, I just can't commit to Andrew Wiggins at this price. That that contract is just not it, man. It's, it, it's really just not it right now. We're talking about 24 million, 26, 28, and 30. He's going to take that player option in 2026. And look at the guy. Look at his attributes. First of all, the numbers. We know what the numbers have been looking like in real life. And the attributes just aren't thrilling. Yeah, you got a nice close shot, nice driving dunk. We know he's athletic. But as far as playing around Trey Young, 
the 76 mid, 75 three, 62 free throw not the best the perimeter defense ain't what you would think it is at 75 you're not getting any steals or blocks causing no turnovers rebounding is good on the offensive rebound side other than that especially when you think about how athletic andrew wiggins is that's not thrilling and uh, lateral quickness is cool and then the help defense is extremely low so not extremely low but it's not as high as i would want it to be so it's like in theory, if like if, if Wiggins was on the last year of his deal, I would just take a chance and maybe see if we can rejuvenate him and get him back to a certain spot. But with all of this money committed to him, I just can't do it, man. I just can't do it. I just cannot do it. Because if it don't work, it blows up in our face. He already doesn't really have a market. We would kind of be doing the Warriors a favor. And then when you look at their draft capital, they don't really have shit in the foreseeable future. They can't trade this. They can't trade this. You know what I mean? And I don't think they're going to trade these. This is a little too far down the line. So what do we do? We just swapping. It just don't it, it don't make all of the sense for us. It really don't. And I don't think Capella is that good um, or changes that much for the Warriors for them to be giving up Kaminga or anything like that. And I'm not taking Chris Paul now with his two years left. Um, so that kind of leaves us kind of eh, with that. And then the other and last place that makes sense for the future not necessarily for right now is the grizzlies steven adams they they don't even know if his career if he's ever gonna play again in his career they was reporting brandon clark he's cool but i look at brandon clark as like a four sometimes small ball five um they're right now thugging it out with biombo and xavier tillman who's this undersized center as well at six seven they could use capella but again is marcus smart is is he is he worth it for us? Do we really think Marcus Smart could come in and coexist with Trey Young? He is the, the pit bull that I was saying. When I talked about the Celtics blueprint of having Isaiah Thomas and a pit bull like Avery Bradley there, the only thing is Avery Bradley shot it a lot better than what Marcus Smart is going to, and Avery Bradley was a little a little bit bigger. They got Marcus Smart at 6'3". Avery Bradley... <sighs> Avery Bradley, I think I feels like Avery Bradley was a little bit bigger. Avery Bradley, the last time I could think of, was like 6'4", but in reality, he may have been 6'2", or 6'3". And I think Marcus Smart is really like a 6'1". So, um, who knows? Who knows the actual heights? But the one thing that Marcus Smart does, the three-point shooting has always been streaky. He does have those games where he can make five, four or five, but it's always going to be streaky. Um... The defense is just unquestionable 92 perimeter defense 96 steel 75 interior def defense as a 6-3 guard um i know his help defense will be out of yeah out of this world 91 uh, consistency on the d is 91 on defense <laughs> ladder of quickness is a 94 you know what i'm saying so it's like this is a this is this is one that i can see us making potentially in the summer because Marcus Smart got the broken ring finger. Um, he's going to be out for four to six weeks. By the time he's back healthy, trade deadline is going to pass. And honestly speaking, I, the Grizzlies ain't going to be in a rush to make no trade with Bane out for basically probably the rest of the year. They'll babysit that. Uh, Jaws out for the rest of the year. It's no rush for the Grizzlies to make this trade. So this is something we can revisit in off on off season. But that is something that's been on my mind. That has been on my mind where um they're kind of the only team when you look through who needs a center the heat are good the hornets i mean you can make an argument but they're going to be fully invested into mark williams as their young big rightfully so they don't need a capella um the jazz young center and walker kessler and i love kelly olenic but i'm not trading kelly olenic um for clint capella no he, he'll be in a free agency market we could probably sign him then the kings don't need a. Uh, um uh, don't need Clint Capella. They really don't have many things to even trade. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not committing myself to Harrison Barnes. And even at that point, they may really just say, "Hey, we rather keep Harrison Barnes." Uh, obviously, Kevin Herter was once a Hulk. And yeah, nothing else that I'm looking at is like, oh, um, maybe a combination of these two. But is that really? Not, you know what I mean? We might as well keep Clint Capella at that point. The Knicks. They have uh, Isaiah Hardenstein, Precious, and Mitchell Robinson. They don't want Clint Capella. The Lakers, I don't think they even have shit I would want for Clint Capella. Um, the Magic, 
the Magic are trying to get rid of their starting center because they feel like they can do what they can do without him. So I don't, you know what I mean? Like, do they? I don't know if they want Clint Capella. And the shit I'm going to want, I don't know if they're going to be willing to give up. Um, I'll give you Clint Capella for Gary, a year of Gary Harris and him going into free agency or, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't, I don't know. They're, they're thriving. They don't really need Clint Capella, in my opinion. He wouldn't be a bad fit, you know, but like, I don't know. The Mavericks, what are they going to give me? What, 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 do they even have 20 million? They should keep Tim Hardaway Jr. They should keep Grant Williams. I don't want no damn Rashawn Holmes. Maxi Kleber is cool, but damn, for three years, I'm okay. And then now all the other shit, I just don't think they would give up. So boom. Um, and Derek Lively is basically giving you the same shit you would get from Clint. They don't need him. They don't need him. They don't need him. I think when the Pelicans walk away from Valanchunas, their next step should be a stretch. Like, I, yeah, nobody, they got Dern. Who do you give, you know, who do you give Capella to? That's why I said I'm going to lean on y'all, man. I'm going to lean on y'all as far as the Capella stuff goes. And I think after that, we we might be done. I want I do want to look at our roster after this trade now, though, just to see where they got everybody lined up. So we got Trey Young, Kobe Bufkin. We have Brogdon, Bogdanovich, Grimes, Fournier, Wesley Matthews, um, Thibel, A.J. Griffin, Jalen Johnson, Muhammad Guy, um, Capella, Kongwu. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Starting start lineup, Trey Young. And this is where it gets tricky. Do I do, I do Trey Young, Brogdon? Do I do Trey Young, Grimes, Thibel, Johnson, Capella? And then off the bench, we got Brogdon, Bogdanovich, Griffin, do I try to force the minutes for Kobe Buffett right away? We got to figure some things out. But as of right now, we got some movable pieces. We can experiment and see what's what, what's really good and what what we love. And maybe we, you know, maybe I'll just look into how we look. I might play a game or something, and then we can figure out if we want to get rid of Bogdanovich as well. Because I mean, if we got Brogdon and he's not gonna start and he could be the six man. We got to find some way to get Kobe Buffkin some minutes. Bogdan, like, this is this trio is going to eat up a lot of minutes. And I don't like any of these dudes. Um, Grimes could maybe squeeze in some minutes at three. But I I like A.J. Griffin on paper. I Like, like look at this, y'all. I like A.J. Griffin on paper. 86 drive dunk, 96 close shot, mid-range, 83, 80 free throw. I mean, uh, 83. 90 free throw the perimeter defense is solid with him only being 20 years old we got uh, 70 interior 71 perimeter um iq iq 70 78 lateral he's gonna progress just because he's 20 so besides the injury history i kind of like the way that that shapes up for you know another wing to put around trey young and defend multiple positions and knock down some shots we don't really need to make this complicated we just need to have some guys around him who can defend multiple positions and knock down some shots. That's it. That's why I would love to get this guy right here. I wish they needed a center. I would love to get Dorian Finney-Smith. Would love it. Obviously, you would love to get Caruso, but I would love to get Dorian Finney-Smith, man. Dorian Finney-Smith is 6'7", um, 86-3. You look at the defensive side of the basketball, 83 uh, perimeter, 72 interior. Rebounding ain't bad. 82 uh, laterals at 74 help. What is Caruso help defense IQ? 84-3, perimeter defense 91, 86 steal, and then help defense is at 90. Like, damn, if it was a way the Bulls could, could, man. If there was a way. Vucevic, Caruso, nah, it's just nothing that I... And again, Vucevic got that damn three-year deal, bro. Vucevic got a three-year deal. Because I definitely don't mind a veteran coming coming over. I definitely don't mind a veteran coming over. Uh, but a Kongu, I don't know if a Kongu is legitimately ready to be the full-time starter. So he might have some nights. So it wouldn't be bad to have a... A guy, but I definitely do want somebody who can knock down some shots. Vucevic, it's a 74-3, but he can make them. He can make them. 
We know what the MIDI is. His passing should be decent. Pass accuracy is 83. I like Vooch. Vooch could maybe unlock some shit with Trey Young. Dribble handoff, pick and pop. Trey Young has Trey Young played with a big who can pick and pop. We know he can lob it to Capella, but just that space, that space would be nasty. And then we still got, like I said, a Kongu. The only thing I don't like about Capella and a Kongu is that kind of like. It's not that they're necessarily the exact same, but neither one of them is floor spacing. I would love to have a duo at the center position where I got one that's traditional, who can block shots, defend, rebound, and I would love to have another guy who can uh, space space the floor. Maybe play some minutes together or some shit. Who knows? Um, I'm going to leave it at that, though. Y'all let me know in the comments some ideas y'all have. When y'all look at my target list, I'm going to even put, I might put, uh, I might go ahead and throw Vooch on my target list next next episode y'all might see a target list being a little bit different because like i know i'm i know I, again i don't want jeremy grant um i don't really know how to how to trade with the pistons because they're so bad and yeah i think i want somebody who can can space the floor look because trey young just never had that he never had that real legitimate look um unless my mind is blanking right now and y'all in the comments like man you don't remember when he played with blah 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 um so I think that would be just a, a, a decent, different look for him. You know what I mean? To have something like that. Um, so maybe I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to look and see if there are some guys who uh, could offer that. Some legitimate guys. No Danilo Gallinari's. Like some legitimate guys at the five who could step out. Guy like Jalen Smith. I, 2K ain't even upgrading my boy. His shit don't look how it should look, man. Jalen Smith been having a much better season than them attributes show. So yeah, we'll look around. Maybe it'll look a little different. Next time, y'all, next time we hear, we'll try to find some guys who can space the floor, knock some shots down. Um, but yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think of a Clint Capella. This is the first episode of the Atlanta Hawks Rebuild. Trust me, this is going to be the one, y'all. This is going to be the one. Welcome to Atlanta where the players play. Hey!